Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Beauty Pop Podcast. I'm Victoria with my uh, co-host, Jen. Oh, hi. Oh, I snuck on you. Hi. It's all right. I was just getting ready to just jam in there. You know, you had coffee. I had coffee today. We're like, award season's over. It's fun today. And that's right. Award season has come to a close for mm-hmm. 2023. And today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to give some of our Oscar reviews of the dresses and stuff like that. But mostly we're going to focus on some spring makeup trends for for what we're seeing right now. And you and I had done, I want to say it was like right after the new year, we did, we covered Vogue's list of what the big beauty trends would be yep. for this year. And I don't know if you saw any, but I spotted a few. I did. That, a lot of yeah. the dewy 90s style stuff was definitely there for me. Yeah, there was a lot that I saw that we talked about on from that list. So from that list, some of the things that, just as a refresher in case you didn't hear that episode, from that list, we noticed one of the big things, and Dewey is totally right, which is always mm-hmm. a good thing. I don't know why Dewey should never not be in, because right. Dewey makes everyone it's look great. For much more forgiving and uh, yeah. always pretty, unless you overdo it, and then you look like a greasy, sweaty mess. True. If you're 18 or 80, Dewey is the way you want to go, right? (laughs) Right. That's a good thing. But one of the things that I noticed um, from that list is that we're going to see a lot less of the bronzer sculpted highlight look Mm -hmm. and more of like the overall lit kind of from within look. And I noticed that on everyone. I did too. And there were some who needed bronzer that didn't even touch the bronzer actually. I think we need to do a ghost (laughs) review. Like this is like the ghost hunters version of what we saw on the red carpet, because I feel like there, there were some, there were some ghosts on the red carpet. I saw a lot of sick Victorian children. I think running around, you know, flowers in the attic status. Yes. I don't know. It was, it was weird because, and we talked about this just broadly um, from a fashion perspective. I always love to look at color, and I think the last few years you've seen a lot more color involved in the Academy Awards, and you've seen a lot of the pinks and a lot of the pastels and stuff. I felt, and at least going through just from my my perspective, there were some beautiful dresses of in colors. Yes. But primarily, I noticed that one of the big overreaching trends through all of award season has been the return of black and white. There yep. was a lot of black and white. And I, More I, white than black at the Oscars. Yeah. Lots and, I, and lots of... And it's weird because it wasn't a red carpet this year. It was a beige champagne carpet, I feel which about I didn't that. like. I, didn't I feel I don't know if it highlighted people's best features. I think there were people who looked a certain way on the red carpet and then looked a certain way in pictures. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it was all the same. And it, it, the same thing with the after parties. I it, even watching. I thought Kendall Jenner. I don't know if you had a chance to see her. Yeah. She's always gorgeous. Yeah. But she was at one of the after parties and she had this beautiful dress on. It was almost like an art decoy kind of design. But it looked flat up again. However, they took the picture and it was actually raised. It had like beading on it that you really didn't get from a lot of the p- pictures. So I don't know what was going on with that this year. I saw her uh, in video, in video yeah. of her actually at the Vanity Fair party where it was no, it wasn't, it was like a regular colored floor, dark wood mm-hmm. floor, whatever. That dress popped. She looked yeah. gorgeous. But you're right. All the, a, a lot of the women, because the Vanity Fair party, which is the big one that they all go to every year. That was also on that champagne carpet, that same yeah. carpet. And a lot of, dre- I think you're right about flat. A lot of the dresses just, they popped in video with movement, mm-hmm. but they just didn't pop on that. And I'm not going to be surprised at all if we hear a lot of celebrities and stylists going to the Academy and saying, let's bring back the red carpet for next year. I think so. I, it I washed just feel a like- lot of people out. And especially when everyone's wearing white, white on beige. I mean, come on. That's like, ugh. Yeah. Uh, There were just, it it seemed to me that those, it it takes a certain person to pull off a white dress, first of all. I think as far as skin color goes, particularly those of us with whiter skin, it's hard to find a white that works. Now, I actually feel pretty lucky because I can wear true white, but if you put like a cream on me or like an off-white... Ugh. And then I have other friends who, if you put natural, real white on them, they look ridiculous, but they can do like the creams and the and the mm-hmm. softer colors. And so it you really have to find your white. And I think a lot of those people who are wearing white didn't really take that into account. But I think Emily Blunt totally pulled it off in that white yeah. dress. It was perfect with her skin tone. It looked really, really beautiful. And um, she was one of the few, I thought, that actually made the white work. And while we're talking about white, Mm-hmm. Who the heck was the person with the veil? <laughs> oh my God. 
And her name how is much Thames. would you want to not sit behind that woman? I, it's just rude. I don't know. I just thought it, it was rude. It was rude. Um, it, it was funny. Her name is Thames. Um, she's a singer. Thames something. I forget her last name. I think actually she just goes by Thames. Yeah. She is Nigerian. She had this for any other event. It was a stunning, stunning yeah. look. It, if you if you don't know who we're talking about, if there if you ever saw any of the crowd shots where there is a woman <laughs> who literally looks seventeen feet tall because she's yeah. got this massive white <laughs> tulle hood on, where I mean I, I was talking to my mom about this and she was like, the people three rows behind her probably couldn't even see. No, I just and she thought, wasn't this nominated. Is the wrong place, right? It's the wrong place. <laughs> she's not nominated. She was way in. I mean, she was like mid orchestra. She was not anywhere near the front. She right. was not a presenter. She was just there. She got a lot of attention, but she got a lot of negative attention because that's just rude. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be sitting in front of people. Like, you know, you, you did that on purpose. Like, yeah. To get no attention. Because anytime the camera purpose. panned across the crowd, you saw that you saw it. I mean, you saw it sticking up like a beacon. So I'm sure she got yeah. a lot of attention, but the minute you see it, you go, gosh, who's sitting behind her? Those poor people. I mean, you're at the I Academy know. Awards. Everybody wants to see. And yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was a she, weird thing. And she didn't look as, bad. As far as, as the gorgeous. dress. Yeah. As far as the dress goes. She's Nigerian. She has this beautiful chocolate brown com you know, complexion. She looked yeah. amazing in white. Her totally. makeup was stunning. The dress was amazing. Like it was a it was an A plus mm plus. -hmm. Just not if you were sitting behind her. No. <laughs> F <laughs> that minus was minus if you were behind her. <laughs> yeah. Um one of the other one of the other things I didn't I missed Rooney Mara. Um I did not see her, but you sent me oh you my told gosh. me you, to look her up. Oh my god. It's like she looks the, like a corpse. I She's swear, wearing I want to give her like a sandwich and some Prozac. She looks like she and, and this is not about weight shaming anybody. Believe me, I'm not in that business. But she just her posture was like hunched. She was hunched over. Her face looked sad. She was wearing a white pillowcase that had been probably probably cost more than my house, but it was a white pillowcase, and it just. And she it looks was, like she has no makeup on. No, her and hair the was, hair is very severe. It's pulled yep. back down the yep. middle. And just not a great look. But I noticed that there were a couple of people. Uh, Michelle Williams is another one who just looks transparent when they try to wear white. Now, at least she looks happy and she wears the red lips. So you get a little poppy. But man, oh, man. And then I noticed on your Instagram, <laughs> not to get too inside, but I saw these two girls who looked so mad that they were at the Oscars. And you called them out. Um, well, I said, yes, there were these two women and I said, I have no idea who these two are, but they look like they're so miserable. Yeah. Well, one of them ended up being Alexei Navalny's wife. So I had to oh. take that back. <laughs> so I was like, all well, right, she's well, still your husband's very happy been to be poisoned. At the Oscars. <laughs> Her husband, just in case you don't know who Alexei Navalny is, he has been uh, the opposition leader to Vladimir Putin. He's been yeah. poisoned numerous times. He's in, in solitary confinement. Her? That was her. What was and she, she doing she, there? She they won um they won best documentary for the it's called Navalny and it's oh, the documentary on that? her husband and then she gave a really lovely speech to her husband and dedicated it to him and stay strong and I love you I mean it was very moving and then I oh, felt great really you're making fun of her outfit I'm just kidding. well no no the, the dress <laughs> it was actually, her face no, though the it was dress her face. she wore a red dress the dress was beautiful she looked mm. great. But it was just move. the face. I was I'm like, gonna, you know, since we've already stepped in it this far, I didn't love it. It was like, I don't know. It had like weird Mrs. Roper sleeves like that, you know, pinched with the cutout. It was like the open air sleeves. Okay, but let's let's just, she didn't have like Christian Siriano dressing her. No, that's She's true. coming from Russia. I think she did an okay job. <laughs> she basically, she probably styled herself. I mean, let's. You know, she's been through the ringer. I'm going to give her a pass. I'll give her the pass. I think that her story is amazing. Her husband's absolutely fabulous. Like, yes. I'll tell you all that. I just yes. got into the air conditioning sleeve. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Jen's being extra <laughs> way harsh, Ty. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about Red for a second. So, yes. So, th there were... Rooney Mara had to get back to her day job haunting Victorian mansions. Yeah. Michelle Williams. I love the new pixie. That looks yeah. great on her. She had the red lip, which was a huge trend. That uh, a lot of red Oscars, lips. Yeah. yeah the, uh, for Oscars night, huge, huge trend. But she also wears, she wears white a lot and she wears simple beading and stuff. And I get it. That's her style. Mm -hmm. It just, 
it it makes me feel like she sh- I mean she's been nominated for I had to look this up six five or six times she's wow. been nominated. Yeah, she's right? like one of the something standards. Like that. Yeah, when she she's does something won. it's usually good. Yeah, she's never won but she's been nominated a, a handful of times. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, maybe it's less than that, but it's a handful of times. And I feel like maybe it's her personality, she doesn't live in LA, she's not the Hollywood girl, she's never been that type, she's never been falling out of a club. She was yeah. with Heath Ledger for a long time and I think that brought attention that she really didn't want. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she lives in New York and she kind of when she's on a red carpet, she's there for work and I think she chooses things that make her kind of disappear a little bit. I do too. That's what it feels like. It's right? like she doesn't want a lot of attention for her looks no. ever. No. And um, that's okay. I don't I respect it. I sure. just it, it does like you know, she does tend to look kind of translucent and she's such a yeah. beautiful part. Like she's so beautiful that yeah. there's no need for that. But if that's where she feels comfortable, I mean, it, it wasn't a horrific outfit. It's just, no, she it looks just like she so... sinks, sinks away to the background. I think if, if Mich- Michelle Williams had uh, a white sort of beaded gown with this sheer overlay, kind of a shawl thing that uh-huh. had there some beading on it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like sheer was a huge, huge trend. Yeah. So I like the fact that she had, it was something a little bit different. It was very Mia Farrow. I think Mia Farrow almost wore that exact same dress back in like the Mm sixties. It was, and she's got the Mia Farrow haircut now. So I think that that's sort of her style inspiration is she's channeling old school Mia. Yeah. Which is great. And she can, she can pull it off. It's fine. I think the red carpet was needed for her outfit to pop. I really think she was one of those instances so white where white on the beige, it was just a it, washout. Yeah, but she did redeem herself with that bold red lip. That looked great on her. Well, and she also smiles. You know, some of these That's ladies true. that go just, you know, always have to have the really pulled like supermodel scowl. And yeah. so she, I, I think in every picture, she looked happy to be there. She didn't look sad. So it's not like she's, you know, trying to to disappear because she's, poor me, I have to go to the Oscars. Right. I just, I do think that's her style. I think that's what she's trying to do. And yeah, you're probably right. She was victimized by the ugly carpet. Yeah. I think that's one of those cases where it just, it didn't, it didn't work. But so let's talk about red lips, right? That's a huge, huge trend. Huge trend. I was actually surprised to see so many red, bold lips. Mm-hmm. If you can't do red, bold, like Lady Gaga, like Michelle Williams did, Gaga's had a little bit of orange in there. Yes. Yeah. Her skin tone can, can take that. Um, Michelle's had a little bit of orange in hers as well. Um, but for the most part, lots of, lots of red lip, lots of berry Mm -hmm. kind of like I I started today saying, like, I love the lipstick you're wearing. It's like a, like a medium (laughs) berry, lots of berry lips. That was another big trend. We saw even kind of red put differently is that typically you either see people do a really intense eye or a really bold lip. And what I noticed is that it was all about the lips this this Oscar season, this award season, that people were doing more of a of a blank ca- canvas for their eyes, not as much smoked out, heavy lashes like we've mm-hmm. seen in the past. And yeah. they're doing more of the intense lip, which is pretty. It was a nice switch. And actually, I think for spring, since we're talking about spring tre- trends, I think that's actually pretty refreshing. Now, you know me. I love the eyes and I love playing up my eyes and doing eye makeup. So I'll never leave that behind completely. But I think it is a nice switch. It's almost a lighter, fresher feel. I think when you have a little less on the eye. Yeah. And a poppier lip. The one, the one exception is Lady Gaga had probably the most intense eyes. Her eyes were gorgeous. It was amazing. Do you, I I read, I I follow her makeup artist. Her name is uh, Sarah Tana, T-A-N-N-A, I think is her name. I follow her and she did a tutorial on uh, how she came up with Gaga's look. Mm-hmm. It's a copy of Addicted to Love, the video from the no. 80s. Oh, Robert that's Palmer's cool. girls. That all those girls, they have slicked, if you've never seen the video, they all have slicked back black, like jet black hair that's like yeah. very, like like you can see the slick in it, you know, like the like almost like a greasy kind, of, not greasy, but you know what I mean? Like very Very slicked. fully slicked, not a hair out of place. Big, Big dark eyes that extend way out. It, not just a cat eye, but a shadow cat eye. All and that's the way what, out. All the way out, and then the very big bold red lip, and that's what Gaga did. I and thought I she thought, looked beautiful. I did not love her dress, but I did love her makeup. I thought it was really pretty. I actually, I thought the dress was really interesting on Gaga. That was Versace. And it was literally days off the runway. Gigi mm-hmm. Hadid wore the dress only 
I think less than a week before it left the runway and went to Gaga. So that's the power of Gaga because she wasn't even scheduled to be at the Oscars and she was because she was filming the she's, you know, the new Harley Quinn Mm -hmm. with Jared Leto as the Joker. So she was filming. But then at the last minute, she had been nominated for best song for Hold My Hand with Top Gun. And she said, you know what? If I can pull this off, I want to be there. It's an honor to be nominated. I want to be there. I want to perform. She did a great performance. And that dress, she looked, when they do side-by-sides of her with Gigi, now Gigi's yeah. probably six inches taller because Gaga's like 5'1 or 5'2. She's really little. But it looked like all they had to do was hem the dress. Wow. I mean, it That's really- That's incredible. She, I haven't seen them side-by-side. You know what it is? It, and this was another trend that I noticed. It's a lot of the dropped waist. Yes. And I'm just not, per- that's personally not my preference. I think some people I agree. can totally pull them off. Um, but I didn't, I noticed that there were a lot of drop waist dresses that are yeah. just, it's not my vibe. But that's true. I, I mean, she looked, I mean, she looks like she's been like really working out. And I mean, she's been like, she's popping. Like she looks yeah. great. She it just wasn't, amazing. yeah, it just wasn't kind of my it wasn't deal. your favorite dress. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you're, you're right about the black and white. So we saw lots of white dresses, lots of white dresses. Mm-hmm. I kind of... You know, I like I know a lot of stylists when they plan out award season, when they have an actor or an actress, especially let's stick with the with the actresses because it's more fun with the fashion. They have to plan out every single, you know, it starts with the Golden Globes. Yeah. Then we've got the SAG Awards. And then there's what's the other one in there? There are the BAFTAs. The BAFTAs. If they, if they mm-hmm. go over to England. And then there there's another People's one in tr- there. Well, no, it's it's SAG and Golden Globes, SAG, Golden Globes, BAFTAs. BAFTAs, and then Oscars, right? It's those yeah. four. Mm-hmm. Am I missing one? No, I guess that's it. Those are the four big ones. And so you have to pick, you've got to plan out, you know, and it sort of tends to be like the Golden Globes are high fashion right. and a little bit riskier, right? The SAGs tend to be a little more conservative. The BAFTAs are kind of like, what artsy. I, you know, mm-hmm. artsy. And, and not everyone goes to the BAFTAs because not every, you know, that is the British Academy. So right. like, Not every film is going to have that crossover of nominations. But then when you get to the Oscars, right, you save your big moment. You bring your A game. You bring your A game. And I think the best. (laughs) And they did. I think the best dressed all in all. The best example of she brought the A-est of A games was Angela Bassett. Oh, my gosh. That purple dress on her. died for the purple dress and the hair. And she just pulled that color off so beautifully and it fit her. Talk about popping on that champagne colored carpet. Oh, my gosh. And let me give her a compliment because first of all, she's just gorgeous. How old is Angela Bassett, would you say? I think. I mean, I don't want to age. It's got to be well into her 50s, do you think? My point is. She she might be 60. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is my point. When you look at- um, She was born in 58. I can't When you math. looked at Sigourney Weaver, when you looked at Jamie Lee Curtis, when you looked at Angela Bassett, they all did different things. So my point is when you get a little older, when you're not the young 20-year-old starlet, Angela Bassett showed how important tailoring is. That dress yes, the was fit. tailored to her. It was I mean, it was made for her. It was just absolutely perfect. It looked it like literally the most was beautiful made curl for of her. fabric. Yeah. Yeah. It literally it was-, was. Jeremy Scott, who is the lead designer for Moschino, some of his stuff is way out there. Yeah. But when he brings it back to his original days, you know, where, where he was first starting mm-hmm. out as a designer, he is classic and tailored. And that was a work of art. And when you saw the full body shot of her, the way that fabric, I mean, she has a gorgeous shape anyway, and she's got that beautiful hourglass. But it like curled hourglass. down her body. I mean, it was amazing. It, just, it, it was know. like a waterfall of fabric that just went, to, like wrapped, it was incredible. And the color could not have been more perfect. Yeah, I, I thought that if and she it, was going to win, that's the dress you want to win in. And I think, you know, her face showed some disappointment that she didn't win um, in that I category. I didn't love that she didn't clap for Jamie Lee. That's I know. something that I, I didn't. I was disappointed. I don't love it either. I know, I know she really wanted to win. And she had a lot of people in her ear probably telling her that she would win. This and she's it. not won before. But yeah. you know what? Jamie Lee Curtis hadn't won either. And it was really a nice moment for either of these two to get yes. their chance. And I thought, by the way, through award season, Jamie Lee Curtis has looked really nice almost mm-hmm. every – Oh, she's looked really good. Yeah. Um, sh- this dress, I think that she wore this time could have been a little more tailored to her. And Sigourney Weaver, who I think is lovely, had a dress on that needed some tailoring. And I think Angela Bassett was just such a way to say, look what how wonderful you can look. It, you're ageless. It's when, all about the fit. She's 64, fit by the right. way. 
She's amazing. Angela Bassett is 64. She's gorgeous. Um, and you want Michelle some tea on Yeoh. That? Michelle Yeoh is 60. Sigourney Weaver. Too. Sigourney Weaver, I want to say, is like 74, 75. Yeah. Um, I, I, she was wearing Givenchy. It was a long sleeve gold. gold. Mm-hmm. It, it also had, it was fur. Not real fur, but it was a fu- like a furry material that looked gold. So I think it, sometimes you have to be careful with how certain fabric, it's like velvet can make anybody look heavier Gigantic. than they are. Gigantic, exactly. And so this was, I had just a felt little bit of that. In this it, needed a, just a little nip at the waist, I think would but have done skin, her. her skin, her hair. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Now here's the tea on Angela Bassett. She actually lives near me. Oh, okay. And she is seen all the time at TJ Maxx and at Ross. <laughs> and I love her for that. Like, I absolutely love the fact that this woman who probably doesn't need to go to TJ Maxx and Ross is a shopper for deals. And so she's always seen, I have not personally seen her myself, but I've walked into a store where everybody's like all a flutter and I'm like, what's going on? They're like, Angela Bassett just left. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of cool. At some point I will run into her. I will. I just know it. <laughs> And then you do need to ask her, though, like, why couldn't she have clapped for I Jamie? Know. I'll be like, Come uh, on. And, you know, it, that really made me, I was, uh, it just really bummed me out because, you it know. It should be I, women supporting women. I, absolutely. You know, or just people supporting people. Right. You're not, every, you're not always going to win. But all I the guys, it. you know, when I they know. announced Brendan Fraser won, right? Yeah. I think Austin Butler was sort of, I think, the popular favorite. I think mm-hmm. everyone thought he would win for Elvis. He did a phenomenal job in in that movie. It was three years of his life, literally yeah. just in character, like method style. But even he, as soon as they announced Brendan Fraser's name, I mean, all the guys were on their feet, it's the clapping right thing to enthusiastically. Do. You know, I mean, and for Angela Bassett, like you can have a face that looks disappointed. I know. But you clap. And you she was front row, to. center, right in front of Jamie's eyesight. Like it just... That really left such a bad taste in my mouth. And, you know, and I wasn't the only one who saw it. It was, it went viral immediately. Oh, everybody noticed It's it. a bad I, look for her. It's a bad look. And I think look. that it does impact and everybody makes a mistake and you're, especially in an emotional moment, you know, but I think that kind of stuff gets around and it makes you wonder, okay, who do I want to work with? And there's already a yeah. limited number of projects for women, especially in her age group. And so what, you know, th- I don't know if that does you any favors by looking that way long-term. Yeah. Um, I understand her disappointment, but you, you know, you still want to applaud the other person, especially when it was someone like Jamie Lee Curtis, who also has had an amazing career, just like Angela Bassett and hadn't been recognized for it. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. I, I lost a little. I, I was sad about it too because yeah. it's it a just bummed me out. It, it, yeah, yeah. Um, Michelle Yeoh. Going back to uh, one second uh, when we were talking about white, I love Michelle Yeoh. I thought she did a great job throughout the whole award season with her fashion. Mm-hmm. I hated her dress at the Oscars. I didn't. You know, it's funny. I, I liked her hair. I liked. She, she had like a diamond. Yeah. It wasn't a tiara. It was almost like a diamond necklace that was sort of woven through her hair with the earrings. I thought that from the neck up, she looked great. I I didn't like the white dress. It yeah. looked kind it of feathery. My, it wasn't my favorite. I didn't. I didn't like feel. She like, and it Rooney Mara. Ha- yeah, <laughs> like it. It looked a little like she was haunting. I know a mansion. You know, she like was- it was. <laughs> I don't know. It just it wasn't my favorite, and you know that's the thing. When you win, your dress is remembered as much as your win. Yeah, you know. That's I true. mean, think about how many Oscar dresses. We're always going to think of Gwyneth Paltrow in that pink oh. Ralph Lauren, and that the white did not... one with the cape too. <gasps> yeah, Remember well, the pink, those the two. Pink, yeah, the pink Ralph Lauren that she when she won her Oscar, which was ill fitting in the bodice, which mm-hmm. always drove me nuts. That did not fit her well. She needed another tailoring session. But we always remember that bubblegum pink, right? You remember what Halle Berry was was wearing when she won, that gorgeous mm-hmm. dress, the Valentino. You remember Julia Roberts in the black and white gown yeah. with the tool down the back. So like these things are indelible. And so unfortunately, I think Jamie Lee, is. she looked classic. Mm-hmm. I think that she looked as, t- I, if she had been a little more tailored, I think she might've looked a little borderline sausage. You think? I think. <laughs> See the the. I don't know if you notice another trend with all with a lot of the dresses, whether it was Gaga or Mindy Kaling, who looked great, by the way. 
she wore black and white. She's gotten so thin. I know she's she, lost a lot of weight. She lost 40 pounds. And Crazy. so she wore a white Vera Wang dress to present uh, t- uh, on the red carpet mm-hmm. or on the champagne carpet. And then she liked the dress so much, she actually got it in black too. Right. So when she presented the award, she was in the same dress, but the black version of it. So black and white was a huge trend. But boning was a very big trend. And I don't yeah, mean I in the after that. party after with cocaine. <laughs> I know because you look at me like what? Probably a, that was probably a trend. That was too. another trend. <laughs> but but when you can see the inner workings, the yeah. boning inside the bodice, that was an, an exposed boning bodice. Mm-hmm. Like that was a really, really big trend. It was even on Jamie Lee's dress. It was she didn't on the have side, the sheer yeah. she did she, it was right down the front too, which I didn't love because I thought it came up a little too high mm-hmm. in the front on her. But the overall the dress, I thought she looked great. And it, she's not going to look back on that and ever regret that look. No, it's That's, not one of those. It wasn't one of the standouts. Now, right. uh, one of the standouts for me, and it's funny because this is not my normal style, I would say, but Nicole Kidman, I thought, looked absolutely stunning in the black sequins with the big flower on the shoulder and above the slit. Rosettes were a very, rosettes uh, and high were slits huge. were a big trend. Yeah. I and, thought Nicole Kidman looked amazing. It's a, apparently that dress was very polarizing and a lot of people either said she looked incredible or my mom was like, I thought that dress was ugly. You know, like oh, wow. some I people just gorgeous. hated it. Yeah. I thought well, she it is, looked fantastic. It's the flowers, you know, the flowers, it's the rosettes. It, yeah. But I thought it was absolutely the hip. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She had one like at the hip, right at the top of the leg slit, which, you know, when you, when you, when you look like Nicole Kidman, you I can know. wear that, you know, she and then so she had the big rosette up on the, uh, on the shoulder. And I thought she, I I actually liked the dress. Mm-hmm. She was there to present. She wasn't there to steal the thunder from other. You know, Nicole right. Kidman brings it on a red carpet, mm-hmm. but normally she's nominated, and I think she's very good at being appropriate. Right. You know, when you're nominated, you go bigger. This mm-hmm. is the opposite of Thames, right? The singer. You don't do that when you're not nominated. No one knows who you are, and you're yeah. not even a presenter. You don't do that. So I thought Nicole Kidman's dress was actually perfect. The other one on that same vibe, not normally my style, because it takes a really special dress to be fully beaded for me to love it. Mm-hmm. But I thought Jessica Chastain nailed it. Oh, yeah. That was a beautiful dress. Silver she looked really beaded. good. Yeah. Everyone's been calling her Jessica Rabbit now. She had she that dr- gorgeous looks like her. I know. red <laughs> hair. But the thing that I loved about her about that dress is that it had the black border Right. I don't know if you remember it. I do. The picture there. Yeah. So it had the black border, which offset all of the silver beads. And then and the, in the train back, was cool too. The train having the black train down the back, I thought was a really nice old Hollywood gorgeous dress. And again, she's a past winner. She was there to mm-hmm. present. She wasn't there to, you know, have the biggest dress in the room. I thought she looked fantastic. And also, she still had the red lip. The right. red lip her with the red hair. Look. Yeah. That's her. Yeah. So she she was on trend you know, with, with a lot of the other spring makeup stuff that we were, that we were seeing. I, I think you and I both said that Cara Delevingne in that red dress, it was an oh Ellie Saab. It was my very favorite. Drop it was dead. Stunning. The Drop color. Drop dead gorgeous. It was the perfect red. It wasn't too blue. It wasn't too warm. It was just a perfect red. It wasn't too light. It wasn't too dark. And the fit of that dress Ugh. and the way the material hung. And I mean, it was just absolutely gorgeous. And I am not one for the big thing on this. I, you know, the, the, accoutrement on her shoulder. Yeah. But the way it was all styled together and the way she did minimal hair, I, it just, she, I thought that was the look of the night. It was stunning. Yeah. I think the three, if because I always like to sort of, you know, wedding season is coming up. Yeah. People have a lot of weddings to go to, graduations, you know, lots of different events coming up in the spring season. And I think that if you want to pull some stuff from the red carpet, obviously black and white dresses, mm-hmm. huge trend. The red lip, if you can't yep. do red, do berry. Yep. You know, if you if red is feels a little Poppy too harsh lips. for you, mm-hmm. do the yep, go go to some sort of a shade of berry. And then the other the other thing is if you can pull it off, like a Cara Delevingne did or like J Lo can, if you can pull it off, slick the hair back because that was the number one hair trend of the night. It was, now there it, were the other there was the Jessica Rabbit Je- Jessica Rabbit Jessica Chastain old yeah. Hollywood look, and then Angela Bassett. You know, I, I thought her hair looked beautiful in old Hollywood and everything, mm-hmm. too. But for the most part, everybody had a slicked back, either a bun or a ponytail. It was very yeah. neat hair and off. You know, I didn't know if that was part of the weather. 
Well, and that might be too because because California LA's had has been really crazy. bad. But we didn't have rain on Sunday night for Oscar Sunday. Uh, but there is a difference because you used to have the updos that were very messy, the romantic mm-hmm. kind of loose buns, and I think the trend was definitely to more neat and clean styles. And I personally don't think I can pull that look off, but it really does make you focus on the face and the fashion when you do. And so I think so for a lot of these girls who have these big dresses and these big, beautiful outfits, pulling the hair back is so much less of a distraction. And it just, it's, it's the perfect match actually, when you're doing a good made up face and a nice, beautiful, fancy dress like they were doing. And if you're doing a dress like Cara Delevingne, which had, like you said, the one big embellished shoulder mm-hmm. and all that. If she had had her hair you down, hair wavy, there. and like it just, it would have been then. Then it cheapens the whole look totally, and then it just becomes like, ugh, what am I looking at? There's too much going on. It's like over accessorizing. You know, you yes. want to pull something off, right? And so, and Sophia Carson, who uh, performed one of the the uh, best song nominees, um, the dress that she wore in the red carpet had two of the trends that we've been talking about. It it was a white, very much like a white kind of ball gown look. Mm-hmm. It had the drop waist, which is not ever something that I love, but it mm-hmm. looked great on her. And what she did, to, she had the, the one thing about Sophia Carson that I think she needs to like, not that she's listening to me, but I would say <laughs> she does a slicked back bun a lot and it looks great on her, but yeah. she does way too deep of a part. And then uh, I know. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. The part is way too deep. She's she's a young, beautiful girl. Bring it to the middle a little more. Mm-hmm. It's too the side part is way too deep. And it always ends up having one or two straggly pieces of hair that kind of falls. You know, it right. just that kind of bugs me that and she does it every single where she every place she goes, she does it. It's too much. Other than that, the white dress was gorgeous. And she had I don't know if you noticed, but she had the biggest emerald necklace on oh my gosh that was gorgeous with the, the white green with popped. the white was absolutely beautiful that was really so popped pretty. so she and had she had a lot of the trends going on the white dress yep. the drop waist the slick back hair the red lip like she really had all the trends and she pulled it together really nicely it, it was great. that was a beautiful dress uh, you're right not normally my style but it really did look great on her it was fantastic and i have to give one more little bit of props because um i what is her name again the, the little mermaid star you said Halle Bailey. Hall- yeah, I want to Halle Bailey. Halle Berry. I know. Um, <laughs> I thought for a young she person, she looked adorable. She looked gorgeous. That color, yeah. and oh, especially doing the Little Mermaid. I mean, what other? I mean, it's like a perfect mermaid turquoise, and it was. She had the lingerie style with the boning on the top, and then the pretty poofy skirt, and yeah. she just and with the fresh makeup, she had a lot of pastels. I noticed mm-hmm. it. She she looked really, really, really beautiful. I don't know how many of us could pull that off. Well, if you're her age, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, but I thought she looked amazing. She was age appropriate. She was adorable. Yep. Definitely like a Disney princess. So not to be all like Devil Wears Prada, pastels <laughs> for spring, groundbreaking, but <laughs> pastels are everywhere for this spring. They really are. I think more so than we've seen in numerous past springs. And I think maybe because during COVID, no one really probably wanted to wear pastels because it's such a happy kind of thing, you know? And I, but I I definitely noticed on the red carpet at the Oscars throughout award season, really, you know, the Golden Globes are February, so it's still a little cold, but. As so we're we moved, looking forward for we're sure. Looking forward, and as yep. we moved into the Oscars, you definitely saw more of the pastel look, pastel eyes, pa- very light pastel blush. None of the harsh, you know, highlight. None of that. Everything was face. fresh and yep. glowy and really almost natural looking. Even though you know, to look natural, you have to wear like five <laughs> pounds of makeup, but. Pastels were really in. And it was so funny because you sent me a text the other day and you said, oh, I just got this brand new eye palette, eyeshadow palette. It's and beautiful. it has lots of, and you said, but see, here's where you lost me because you said we can talk about, it has lots of green. It does. And so we can talk about green and St. Patrick's Day. I'm and like, I was it's like, St. Patty's Day. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> I got, all I pictured was, because my dad's from Ireland and you're Irish as well. Like I just pictured like everyone like drunk at an at a St. Patrick's eyeshadow. parade <laughs> wearing like green glitter eyeshadow and like shamrock stickers on their face. That's I'm like, definitely okay. not it. No. Okay. But 
one of but the then tri- you so, sent me a picture of the palette that you just bought, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous, and uh, it's different. So one of the things, because I'm an eye nut, like I love to do my eyes. I love a smoky eye, and I will wear pretty much any color on my eye except for a lot of like the the overly red pinks, right? There's only one color in this palette that I wouldn't use actually. And so I love to get a palette because I love the choices and it's like my paint box and I love it. So uh, one of my favorite brands for eyeshadow and it's expensive. This is the only drawback is that this is not a cheap brand. This palette is $69. Oh, wow. This is for serious eyeshadow people. (laughs) This is, and if you, and if you want something that'll last you forever because you get um, 15 colors in this oh, palette. Okay. So there's 15 shades, but it's Natasha Denona. And I think her formulas for eyeshadow are incredibly smooth. They are pigmented. So you don't have to keep putting layer after layer on and they blend really easily. So for formula, Natasha Denona is really great. So if you have a little money to invest, this palette will get you really far. It's this, and we've, we've, we've mentioned it. her palettes in the past too. I got that you this one. Is, Yes. And, and I have, yeah, this is, this is a, one of, the, I think the best selling palettes at mm-hmm. Sephora are always from Natasha. So it is, if you are investing in it, like you said, it'll last a really long time yeah. and the quality is top notch. And if you want something that offers similar type colors and I believe formulas and is much cheaper, I'm a big fan of Morphe. Morphe palettes for eyes are absolutely great. And you can get a huge one for like 24 or 25 bucks. Yeah. And if, so if you're looking to do more of a spring eye, go for the, go for that. If you don't want to invest the 69 bucks, but if you can get over the price, this palette guys is absolutely beautiful. The shade it's brand new. It's called retro glam is the name of the palette. And what I love about it, I'm looking at the colors now. It is so pretty. So stinging pretty. First of all, you have a great blend of matte shades and some shades with sparkle, but none of her shades are like overtly glittery. So like adult people can wear this without feeling stupid. Yes, you this can is get not the like shimmer. A, yeah. This is not like your daughter dress up Disney princess look. This isn't hard candy. If you remember that ba- with all oh, the yeah. chunky glitter in it. No. Oh yeah. This is, they do have, cause I, I will only use shimmer for the most part on my eyes, but this is a great blend of both shimmer and matte. So, um, the thing that I love is that it features greens and that's what I was kind of laughing because it has become a new trend. If you notice splashes of accent color from the jewels that we talked about earlier at the Oscars to eyes, green is making a comeback and it's not the green like you thought of with the St. Patty's well, I, day. I, I kind of also went to wicked. No, Broadway. it's not I was witch like, makeup. Okay, this is, yeah. <laughs> the greens that are making their way to eyes, very dark emeralds if you're going to do a smudgy, smoky eye, and then also some really light, sagey to grassy greens. And they are absolutely lovely. And I think on most skin tones, these would be really lovely. Yeah. Um, so I have tried this palette now for like, I think I've had it for a couple of weeks, and I've already put it to good, good use. And here's why I think it's extra perfect for spring. You've got a few darker colors where if you want to do a smoky or more dramatic eye, you can do it, but you can do it with shades of pink or you could do it with shades of brown or green, which are in this in this palette. But what I'm loving doing right now, and I didn't do it well a little bit today, is I can I'm see taking, a little bit of shimmer. Yeah. Is I'm taking some, I'm taking lighter shades and I do them on my lid and I go all the way up to my brow bone with a lighter shade like maybe one of the lighter beiges or a lighter pink. And then I'm just putting a tiny bit of a darker color in my crease, but I'm not doing the full smoke out. I'm just doing a little bit here and then a dot just across the crease and then just a dot of shimmer on my brow bone and then in the center of my eye. And I'm really liking the look. I don't think it's a heavy look. I think it's actually really nice for spring. And so These colors are making it really perfect to do that because they are all light enough, but you do have a few choices of Mm -hmm. some of the matching coordinating shades that go a little darker so you can get a little definition in your crease. And um, yeah, love it. And the other thing that's nice about this palette, just looking at the colors, because I haven't used this specific palette, but I I don't really do much uh, with eye makeup, but these look like they're very forgiving colors as well. Mm -hmm. So like if you get into a smoky kit, right, where you've got like navy blue and charcoal and like a lot of those are intimidating colors. And if you mess up and you've already got like your foundation on or whatever, then you kind of, you know, you have to get out the makeup wipe. And I've, I've been through that, right. You almost don't want to start all over. 
And you also colors, don't want a color that sprinkles everywhere when you've got dark colors like right, that. And a right. lot of the cheaper formulations will, especially with those intimidating palettes where you have yeah. to have lots of pigment. And then all of a sudden your cheeks look like, you know, you've been crying it's, navy tears. Right, right. So this palette looks like you can play around with it and there's there's some forgiveness there. If yeah. you, you know, like if you start with the beige or the pink and then you kind of want to experiment a little bit with a little bit of green on mm-hmm. your lid. The light green, I would say it's almost like a very pale, like minty kind of green. It it's a really beautiful pastel. There's it's one like, shade. I would say Easter egg colors, but it's not they really. Are. It's they're, they're pastel. They're really a lot lighter than that. The, I don't want to scare um, anyone off by saying Easter egg because that kind of has the a color different. color called Marlin is kind of a shiny, a shimmery, minty green. And what I've loved to do with that is just put it along my lash line. Mm -hmm. And then beige, pretty much all the way up to the top. It's very wearable, but it gives you a light little burst of sparkly color around just all the way across kind of the lower part of your lid. It looks so nice. And again, these are not scary colors because they're not overwhelming, but the pigment is there. So you don't have to layer on a ton of color. And I feel like it just gives you a nice springy kind of wash. It's almost like a watercolor wash on your eye, which I... I like. And like you had mentioned, and I think this is important to stress, this palette specifically does not look too young. No. Because, because you, believe you can me, get I would into, love it. You know, yes. it can, you can get into you, trouble. <laughs> you can get into trouble with that, yeah. you know? Yeah. If you're in your it 30s, look your too 40s, young. your 50s, you're like, yeah. okay, can I really wear all that glitter all the time? I get, you know, sparkly for a night out maybe, but, you know, or can even I do pastels this all the time? in general can kind of be a little scary, but no, th- this is a very wearable palette. It's beautiful. I, I would say it's very muted. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every tone, even though it sounds funny to say there's greens and there's, it's, they're all very muted shades, even the shimmery ones. And so you can really get some very pretty looks with a wash of color without feeling like you have, that you look like you're ready to go to the theater, you know, or, or on right. stage at the theater. It's not stage makeup for sure. You don't want to look like someone dropped a house on your sister. You definitely do not want to do that. No. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> although I love Wicked, you know, you probably right. can find better style icons, I would think. <laughs> right, right. And it's not too crazy like Elsa either. Let's stick with the sisters, right? That's it's right. Not, it's not it's, crazy. It's not yes. like that either. Yeah. It's, this is not necessarily Disney. Yeah, it's not right. Disney movie makeup. This is like, right. you know, real people with jobs makeup. Yeah. I like that. Real people with jobs, <laughs> comma, with jobs. Yes. With jobs, right. Well, I mean, like somebody that has to go somewhere, you know, if you, you're you not going to want to wear mint green ice cream eyeshadow if you've got to go to a meeting or if you have to go to a a funeral. This is very wearable for life. How about that? Absolutely. I love it. (laughs) So thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Beauty Pop. Uh, Please follow us on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Give us a rating and review. And you can always follow us on Instagram as well at Beauty Pop Pod. Follow Jen at Jennifer Horn Radio. Follow me on Air Victoria. And uh, we will talk to you next week with more reviews and more great stuff. Plus, We are going to do another special episode for our wine loving friends. Jen I'm in training being the Somalier. right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jen being the sommelier, she's going to offer up uh, her expertise and we'll talk about some celebrity wines because they're everywhere mm-hmm. and rosé season is coming up. So we want to also talk about some celeb rosé and we'll Love see it. which ones are actually worth the hype. So that's going to be really fun. I can't wait for that. So thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.